If you are already using the DMX console to control Unreal Engine lighting, why not use it to control other assets too? For example, for moving the truss up or down, or for controlling other transform parameters, such as rotation, It makes it easy to apply console effects for animating multiple objects and to combine multiple effects to achieve complex movement. Using the DMX Transform Asset Pack, you can use the DMX console to control any transform parameter of any actor in your scene. In this example, DMX Transform, DMX Lights, and DMX Motion Marketplace assets are used. The links are in the description. Before using blueprints from the DMX Transform Asset Pack, you have to enable the DMX Engine and DMX Protocol plugins. Next, go to Project Settings, open the DMX plugin, and add an input port. Select protocols and IP addresses compatible with your DMX console network settings. If using ArtNet, you may need to change the external universe start to zero, since the first universe for most lighting consoles is zero. Nine new attributes for controlling transform parameters need to be added to the fixture attribute list. They need to be spelled exactly as shown here. The final step is to create a DMX library. Right click, select DMX, and then DMX Library. Rename it if you wish, and open it. We will use it to patch the blueprints as we go. In the DMX Transform folder, you can find 9 blueprints that enable DMX control of transform parameters, and a folder with GDTF files for easy patching. We will start with the base blueprint of this asset pack, the DMX Transform Blueprint. But before we can use it, we have to create an appropriate fixture type. Open the DMX library, click on new fixture type, and rename it to transform. From the DMX import drop-down, select the GDTF transform file. Each fixture in this blueprint pack has two modes, 8-bit and 16-bit. You can use 8-bit mode to save on the number of channels, but for precise movements and positioning, it is recommended to use 16-bit mode. In the right pane, we can see all the parameters we can control using this blueprint. For creating a fixture based on another blueprint, we will follow the same procedure. Now, we have to patch the newly created fixture. Click on Fixture Patch, then on Add Fixture, and select the fixture type you want to patch. In this example, Transform. The fixture is added to the first available DMX address, in the first mode. We can change the mode if we wish. Using Control D, we can patch multiple fixtures if necessary. For this tutorial, we will leave the fixture in 8-bit mode. To demonstrate the use of the DMX Transform Blueprint, we will use a standard cube static mesh actor. For the blueprint to work, the mobility property of the actor should be set to movable. We start by inserting the DMX Transform Blueprint into the scene. In the default section of the Details pane, 
we can see that the maximum change for the location parameter is 1000, and for the scale parameter, 10. We can change these values if we wish. In the same section, we have to select the actor we wish to control. We can do it using the picker. Or by selecting the actor from the drop down list. Finally, we have to assign the appropriate DMX library and fixture patch to the DMX component of a blueprint. Selected actor can now be controlled from the external DMX console. Note that location parameters are set to 50% or DMX 128 by default. If you leave them at zero, the moment you connect the DMX, the controlled actor will move to negative maximum move values. Since 128 is not exactly the middle between 0 and 255, the controlled actor will jump a bit when DMX is connected. It can be mitigated by using 16-bit mode. Rotation parameters should also be set to 50%, to preserve the rotation set in the editor. Scale parameters should never reach negative values. By default, they are set to 9%, or DMX 23. That way, you can shrink the actor to 0 or expand it 10 times. If you use the provided GDTF files for patching to a GDTF-enabled console, such as Grand MA3 or Magic Q, these default settings will be set automatically. Often, it may be more convenient to use DMX control for only one set of transform parameters, for example for rotation, and leave location and scale to be set in the editor. In such cases, we may use DMX move, DMX rotate, or DMX scale blueprints, each of them has three parameters to control X, Y, and Z values. The next three blueprints, DMX Lift, DMX Drop, and DMX Rotate Z, perform the most common tasks, moving the actor up or down, and rotating it around Z axes. Each blueprint has one parameter. DMX Rotate and DMX Spin Blueprints are related, but perform quite different tasks. DMX Rotate rotates the actor between the minimum and maximum rotation angles, which is equivalent to changing rotation values in the Transform section of the Details pane. The movement of a console fader determines the angle of rotation. DMX Spin, on the other hand, makes the actor infinitely spin around selected axes. The movement of a console fader determines the direction and speed of a rotation. DMX Spin has one additional parameter, called Reset. If Reset is below 50%, spinning is enabled. If it reaches 50% or more, spinning is disabled, 
and rotation is reset to original values. In order to spin again, the reset fader should be set to less than 50%. DMX Spin Z works in the same way as DMX Spin, but enables spinning around Z axes only. So far, we were using blueprints from DMX Transform Asset Pack to control single actors. The reference point for transform actions was the pivot point of the controlled actor, which was moving, while the blueprint itself remained still. In this example, we are using the DMX Rotate Blueprint to rotate the piece of truss around its pivot point. But, there is another possibility. If we patch the blueprint, but do not select an actor to control, the blueprint will reference itself, and the location, and rotation of the blueprint will be the reference for transform actions. Now, if we attach an actor to the blueprint, it will rotate around the blueprint, not around its own pivot point. This way, we can use blueprints from the DMX Transform Asset Pack, to control multiple actors. In this example, we have three pieces of truss attached to the DMX Move Blueprint, which is itself attached to the DMX Rotate Blueprint. Now, we can move the trusses as a group. This method will not work with the DMX Transform Blueprint, or the DMX Scale Blueprint, which control the scale parameter. Also, we should not combine blueprints that control the same parameters. For example, Rotate and Spin, or Transform and Move. Such attempts could cause command interference and produce unpredictable results. The DMX Transform Asset Pack is available from the Unreal Engine Marketplace. The link is in the description.